Hey everybody, so in this video we're going to be talking about graphics in the media. So we're going to go on, talk more about some different graphs, starting out with two more graphs, multiple bar graphs and multiple line charts. All right. So a multiple bar graph has two or more sets of bars that allow comparison between two or more data sets. All the data sets must have the same categories so that they can be displayed on the same graph. We'll take a look at that in just a second, but the next one, in cases for which data categories are quantitative, a multiple line chart. is often a better choice. All right, so for example, what general messages are revealed by these graphs? So for this first graph, we have a multiple bar graph. So the brown bars represent men, the orange bars represent women, and our categories are what degree they have, and it's telling us their mean incomes, sorry, median incomes. All right, so just a couple things we can get from just glancing at this essentially. First off, people with greater education have a higher median income. So that one's easy to see because going from not a high school graduate and going up, we can see that the income is increasing every time. So the more of a degree you have, the more you make. All right. Now that's true for both the orange and for the brown bars. But what if we compare the orange and brown bars now? So in every single category, if you notice, the brown bar is higher than the orange bar. So what's that telling us? That says, in the same education bracket, men make more than women. And because for every single one of these, brown bars are higher than the orange bars. Okay. So these are just a couple basic things that we can get off of this graph without having any further questions that we're trying to specifically see from this graph. These are just some basic facts that we can see. All right, let's move on to a multiple line graph. Again, we're just going to look at some basic things here. Um, so this line graph shows the years on the x-axis and the unemployment rate on the y-axis. Right? So for each of these lines, it just shows where the unemployment rate is for any certain year. Now the different colored lines correspond to how much education they have. So, as you can see, most of these lines, or really all of these lines, follow that same general shape. But the big difference between them is the gaps in between them. So as you can see, not being a high school graduate has the highest unemployment at any point along the graph 
it's always the highest. Followed by high school graduate, it's always the next highest, and so on. So something that we can see is no matter what the unemployment rate unemployment has always been lower for those more highly educated. Okay. Again, this is just some basic stuff that we're saying. Nothing really groundbreaking. We're not looking for anything in particular. All right, next up, stack plots. So another way to show two or more related data sets simultaneously is with a stack plot. which shows different data sets stacked upon one another. Data can be stacked in both bar charts and line charts. Stacked lines are particularly useful for showing trends over time. And we'll have an example right underneath this. So, for example, what was the death rate for cardiovascular disease in 1980? Discuss the general trends visible on this graph. So if we're looking at this, we see pneumonia, cardiovascular disease, tuberculosis, and cancer. Okay. So from it being stacked like this, it's really easy to see the gaps in between the lines. Okay. So for 1980, we're just going to look at the thickness of this green part because that's the cardiovascular disease that we're wanting to know about. And the top is about 620. The bottom is about 180. So to figure out how many deaths there actually are, you just subtract the two. So there are about 440 deaths per 100,000 people in 1980. So what are a couple of things that we can talk about for this graph? Well, if I just go over here so I have a little bit more room. For pneumonia, we can see that it really decreased because it started out pretty thick. And over here, you can barely even see it, right? So pneumonia. decreased for cardiovascular disease it grew for a little while but then it did go down because as you can see here's the thickness it started at it got pretty thick around the 1950s, 1960s, but now its thickness has decreased a lot, right? So it grew, then decreased, what about tuberculosis? So if we're going to, for tuberculosis now, that's the blue. So that one started pretty thick, which let me get another color so it's not blue on blue. But then what happens right here? Right there, it basically just disappeared. Part of that's because, well, somewhere around the 1920s, a vaccine was developed. So that really helped. And does this mean that tuberculosis just no longer exists since we can't see it? 
Well, no, it is still there, but the deaths are so small now that it doesn't actually become visible on this graph. So tuberculosis decreased and almost disappeared. All right, last one, cancer. So for cancer, they did rise, because you can see there's pretty small, and around the mid-1990s, it did kind of peak, but since then it's leveled up and even dropped a tiny bit. So cancer increased then dropped slightly. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. In the next video, we're gonna talk about three-dimensional graphics. I just don't wanna make this video too long. All right, so I will see you in the next video.